I'm Linda Lux and I've lived in Venice since 1970 and I remember the first time I came to Venice I exhaled. I just felt like I was at home. It was, I just knew I had to be here. So first came in 1970, lived on the peninsula, then bought a house um, where I lived for 40 years on Wavecrest Avenue right off the beach. Raised my kids here. Love it, love it, love it. It's been a wonderful place to live. There's so much going on. There's so many varied people, diverse in every way, and it's alive and it's palpable and um, it's just a great place to live. It's changed so much in the 40 years that I've been here. It's hard to even comprehend how much it's changed and probably is going to change, which is sad to me because it attracted people like me because of the mixture of people, the diversity, the funkiness of it, the edginess of it, uh, which seems to be going. We're here at the canals, which is a perfect example of edginess gone. Um, they're beautiful. When I moved here, the canals were what I called dog patch. They were funky. The canals had been in disrepair since the 1926, when the city of uh, LA annexed the city of Venice and filled in all the canals but these four that are remaining. And, um, but the four that re were remaining were never taken care of and were crumbling and falling apart. And all the houses in the canals were really cute little cottages. They were weekend cottages, um, peopled by, when I moved here, serious bikers, like Hell's Angels type bikers and lots of hippies. And uh, it was a really strange place. Um, anyway, after that, in the early 80s, I believe, or could have been the early 90s, the canals were finally fixed up by the city of LA, which opened them up to a lot of different kinds of people moving here and different zoning codes and building codes. And it resulted in knocking down a, most of the cottages. There's still some, but building these giant houses, um, which are not to my taste, but they're to some people's taste. And it changed the whole demeanor and look of the canals. They are still and always will be beautiful. Most people don't realize that there was something in Los Angeles that was called redlining. It was not in Los Angeles, it was around the country. It was called redlining, which redlined around certain areas where people of color could, could live and they could only live there. Um, there were covenants and other and property and deeds, etc., which prevented anybody of color lots of times Jews, from living in certain ho housing areas. Um, and, and it was made illegal in the United States in 1948. However, it did continue in many ways. And in Venice, which is interesting because the African-American community that lives here came here with Abbott Kinney to build it. Uh, Irving Tabor was Abbott Kinney's um, best friend, chauffeur, man Friday. His whole family, the Reese family, the Tabor family, actually designed and built the original pier, the original games, the plunge, all of the things that were in the original Venice. And they could only live in what is now called Oakwood. To prove the point, when Abbott Kinney passed away, he willed his home to Irving Tabor, his best friend, right-hand man, but he, Irving Tabor couldn't live in the home. They had to move the home, physically move it into Oakwood, where it still exists, and was kept in the Tabor family until just a few years ago. All the descendants of the Tabors, many of them still live there. The Reeses, I've met and know quite a number of the descendants of the original Venice families, and they, many of them still live in that neighborhood, although many have sold out because as the property values go up and great-grandchildren and grandchildren want to cash out, basically, so they sell the family homes and share the money. That's happened a lot. Um, about 10 years ago, I got involved in the Venice Neighborhood Council because it was somewhat in disarray. And so I ran for the Neighborhood Council as a community officer and won. Um, and then I've run a few more times. And for the last two terms, I've served as Venice Neighborhood Council president. I'm about to retire, however. I think 10 years is a good run and it's not a lifetime job. But it's been very interesting because I've sort of presided over a lot of the change and a lot of development coming in and the people that have been here a long time like me are saying, wait, stop, what's, my, what's going on? What's happening to my community? And the new people that are coming in are much more affluent and saying, what are you talking about? That, that's old, we want the new, change is good, out with the old, in with the new. And it's caused a lot of um, dissension in the community but it's because the people, once you get here, you're involved, you care. Whatever your issue is, you care. It's not a sleepy little place, a little village where people come here and do their own thing. People get involved. It's with one, that part is wonderful. 
one of my big passions has been to try to preserve some of the diversity that was here when I got here that brought me and a lot of people here. The diversity of economic diversity, racial diversity, all, all kinds of diversity, young and old. Um, and I now work with an organization called Venice Community Housing, which is goal is to maintain some of that diversity. We buy and uh, new and build low-income housing uh, projects so that people can continue to live in Venice and not be pushed out by the high rents and the high cost of housing. And so far we're doing really well. Uh, we have 14 apartment buildings uh, in Venice, Delray and Mar Vista. We have an um, administrative office on Rose Avenue. We're buying, we've just bought another property. We're building another apartment building uh, for low-income people. And um, that's our mission. I just hope that the people that move here learn the history of Venice, find out what happened before they came, and try to understand what went on and why the people who've been here for a long time are so fierce about protecting what was here. I would say learn what was here first, have some respect for it and understand and factor that into your thinking because there's a lot of wonderful history from every decade, from the beginning, from the turn of the century, that needs, that's been incorporated into the culture of Venice. And if that's all thrown out, then we lose what Venice was, what we came here for in the first place. It's very different than any other community at all that I've ever been in. It's very different, and if it becomes homogenized, it will lose its uniqueness, it will lose its charm, and that would be a tragedy. So I just hope the people that come in read your Venice history. There's a lot of Venice history books. Learn what made Venice what it is and love it the way we do.